Today I'm testing if this little device here is actually capable of handling 150 amps. That's what I bought it for, but to be honest with you, I have my doubts and I think we will see some smoke today because I'm planning to test it to the limit if I can. If you see my setup here, this is an old Arduino. I've connected five volts, five volts on ground to this amperage device and I connected also a zero. A1 is not connected. Uh, the yellow cable is also here not connected. And I'm not quite sure what this is uh, doing. I looked at the schematics, but I'm electronic savvy enough to understand what it is actually doing. Uh, maybe you can leave me a comment if somebody knows what it is. I think it's somehow a little trailing signal or something like this, a temperature from before, or who knows what it is. Um, anyway, I, I figured out that I don't need it. The Arduino will basically just uh, read out this A0, which is the amperage going through the device. Um, this device here you can basically ignore. This is for my diesel heater setup. If you follow my videos about the diesel heater, there's actually some news about it. The two-way valve that I've ordered um, is officially lost in the mail. The uh, um, seller actually today shipped another one without me even asking, so I guess they figured also that the part is lost. Um, but this is a different video. So anyway, I'm going back to um, the battery. Um, you can see here the, the battery setup. Um, I removed these uh, top braces here. Uh, as I figured, they're not necessary. They're still here on the bottom. That's enough to hold the thing together. Um, here I put some uh, terminals, plugs that are 10 millimeter. So I made a little adapter. By the way, this is all a, a squash, a squished a copper piping. As I find that these terminals here, these bridges, are crazy expensive if you buy them separately, especially if you, since you don't get them by size as you need them. Um, maybe if you if you've seen my previous videos about the battery, I've made a modification. I put now two cells uh, together in parallel. It's still a 12 volt system, but before I had two 12 volt batteries separate. Uh, now I put uh, two cells each uh, in parallel. Turns out to be still 12 volt. But this way I need less BMS units. These here, I've made videos about those as well. Self-made BMSs. Um, also here there's a balancer. By the way, Lota, I gave you wrong information. It actually did not die. It stopped uh, working for a little while and then it came back. So I'm not quite sure. Maybe it didn't sense the voltage quite right or the some something was not quite uh, connected right. It's doing its job actually quite nicely. This balancer here. I think I'm going to keep it on the system. Um, okay, what I have here is the, the battery, normal battery with uh, each two cells have a BMS connected to it. This is a BMS, this is a BMS, or it's not a, really a BMS, it's a, a voltage measuring device. The BMS in the end will be a, a Raspberry Pi, which will be controlling a solid state relay, a solid state relay similar to this, which I've already built into my inverter. Um, I made a video about that as well in the past, so if you're interested in what that is doing, uh, you can also look at that video. Um, in a nutshell, the inverter is controlled by this solid state relay, which in turn is controlled by the Raspberry Pi in the end. And so I can send a signal to the inverter and turn it off. Even though uh, the, the switch may be on or not, um, this is what these cables are for. They go here. Unfortunately, the color scheming is not the, the right. They go here to the solid state relay. Right now, it's it's the solid state relay is of course um, closed. 
So I control the power only with that switch. You see 12.6 volts in the moment on the battery. Um, this device typically shows a little bit low. I expected it. Uh, it's probably closer to 13. 12.9 maybe reality. And what I'm trying to do is I'm gonna try draining the power out of the battery with this inductive heat plate. We will have a look if that little chip here is gonna actually gonna make these 150 amps. I doubt it, but we'll never know. Okay, so far to the setup. I hope I didn't forget anything. And now we'll go into the testing. So now we are in idle. There is uh, no power drawn over the uh, measurement device. Sorry. Now we're in idle. Now we're in idle. There's no power drawn over the measurement device. It went down a little bit by five or so. Okay, and now let's see what happens when I turn on the stove. The heater is now running on 200, wa on 200 watts, which apparently it cannot do without pulsing. Here we see the power draw, 2.2 in standby. And 75 while it's on. 75 watt. The heater goes down to 11, 10.8. That means the battery is not really charged. I think I should charge the battery before I continue here. But let's have a look what's happening here. Five or six is basically idle, and then it goes down to 200 and something. All right, let's increase the power. Four hundred. Not sure if you can see that. I can't see it on the camera and the cell phone. Still 2.2 amps, and the same power draw. No, actually, a little bit more. But it's still pulsing. 10.8, 10.7. Still pulsing. Okay, let's go up. 600. Seems like it stopped pulsing. No, it still pulses. Just turned off again. Seventy-seven, seventy-eight, ten point six, how oh, does that show here? I'm not sure how sure how stable that is here. Okay, let's go up to eight hundred. 800 here, which gets it to 80. I think now it stopped pulsing. Ten point Very unstable. I doubt this power draw is so unstable. Well, maybe it is, I don't know. Also Grafana is showing too much. 2.8. Go 
go to 1000. It will not show 1000 because the first digit is broken. To 000. zero, zero. It gets it up to 100 amps. Ten point two volts. So apparently it's still able to run a hundred amps. Let's see if I burn my fingers. It's maybe fifty degrees. Shuts off, doesn't like it. Batteries can't keep up. Now we can test the charging right away as well. I have this cheap charger here. We put the, the positive is on already. Now we're putting it on negative as well. Oh, it thinks it's full. I don't think so. Okay. Oh, this doesn't mean anything. This is 518, 519. Let's get it off. 512 if I turn it off. It registered it. Let's see. If if I increase the charge rate to 5 amps, we go here to 526, 525. I think we've seen that. We increase the charge rate more. By forty here. Twelve point five. Let's see if I go in winter mode, what happens then? It does not increase. All right, let's charge it and see if we can tomorrow put some higher load on it. So it's a day later. The charger is telling me the battery is charged. So I will also double check it, see what the voltage is. I hope you can see it. Thirteen point four. Almost thirteen point five volts. Starting the inverter. Immediately we see a power draw. Okay, now we're starting. Twelve hundred watts on the burner, giving 125 amps output and here we have a relatively uneven power draw i'm not sure where that comes from if that has to do with the inverter the inverter shows 10.5 10.6 volts so it did help to charge it yesterday Let's see if we can go up more 1400 i'm not sure if that's the maximum i will try 1400 watts and then I can also go to 16. Well, that kicks the inverter, which probably saved also this chip. So, try again. 1200. The inverter shows 10.7 volts. 
and that's something I wanted to test as well. So we have 11.7 volts actually on the battery, but the inverter is only seeing 10.4, and that has to do with the resistance of mainly this chip, but of course also with the cable and all these connectors I have on here. 1400. Ten point five, ten point four at fourteen hundred watts. We still see almost twelve, eleven point seven five on the battery. Fourteen hundred watt, it's working right now. It's almost one hundred and fifty. I'm actually surprised about this little chip here. It shows 11.5 after the chip. It's 0.1 volt of voltage drop. That's better than I expected, to be honest with you. At almost full power. Now the chip is getting hot. Let's see if we can measure the temperature. So it's almost 70 degrees with this probe. I'm pretty sure that we in reality see at least 80 degrees, 81, see, we are already at 81, so probably we get close to 100 degrees. Heat up on this thing. Okay, interesting. This little chip works as it's uh, advertised. However, I don't think it's the best option for the camper, just for the fact that it heats up quite a bit. That's it. This test turned out better than I expected it, uh, quite frankly. I thought we see some smoke here today while this chip is going up in smoke. I'm not quite sure how long it will last, but it actually works quite well. So if you're thinking about measuring amperage, that certainly works. But my problem with it is how to connect it with very low resistance to the rest of your cabling. I couldn't find a good way for that. It looks ugly. And the other problem is that the chip itself heats up quite a bit. Okay, thank you very much for watching. That's it for today with the lithium batteries. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.